Hey, this is Melissa of Bob and Boy, and we are here for the first lesson as an apprentice. We've set up our shop, and now what we want to learn to make is a spinning wheel bobbin. So, this is Master Turner Alan Dewey, and he's going to show us how step by step. Good evening, Melissa. Tonight, I'm going to show people how to make a spinning wheel bobbin. This is one I made earlier, and what we're going to do is replicate this bobbin. So, do you normally do them one at a time all the way no, through? No, no, I normally do at the number that the client wants, max six, typically, and uh, I will do them one after another. You do the, to, get them up to certain stages? Like, oh yes, yes, yes. work yeah. them a stage at a time. Yeah. However, for this exercise we're doing one. Okay. So, I've got a piece of wood here, this is cherry. Could be black walnut, it doesn't matter, it depends on what you want on your bobbin. Maple? Could be maple. I'm going to draw circles on this and then cut them out. So, I have here a template. These templates are about $20, but you can probably find a cheap one. Pencil somewhere. Look, Master Turner, there's a whole jar of them up here. Oh, thank you, Melissa, darling. <laughs> Christ, darling. Right. Journeyman. So, journeyman, <laughs> Melissa, yes. So, what I'm going to do I'm going to find the smallest one that this will go through and then go to the next one up. That allows me to turn a bit down if it isn't exactly centred or something. This on, on, on the uh, middle part. How thick is this wood? This wood is nominally about an inch. It's probably a tiny bit under. It's called four quarters in the trade. Mm -hmm. There you are. It's, it's actually slightly over an inch, so it's a good inch. Why does it need to be that thick? Um, because that's how it's made. These actually are under half an inch, so we're going to get two out of every circle. Oh, okay. And I'll show you what happens, how you want to cut it. Now, so there's two big ends. And I'm going to go down to the small end. So it doesn't go through there. It does go through there, but it kind of only just. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually... It's kind of, well, no, it'll do. So, and I'm going to cut, draw and cut another one. And what I'll do on this one, because it's fairly close to the size, I'll probably try and cut on the outside. Now, what I now have to do, I have to cut the wood in squares. Because I want to cut these down on the bandsaw and I don't want them round when I cut them. That is a recipe for disaster. And believe me, you'll end up with less fingers than you started out with. Okay, so now I'm going to cut these on the bandsaw into squares. This bandsaw is my bandsaw and I've modified it and taken the safety guards off. I recommend that you keep your safety guards on. Now I'm going to measure these and have a look at them and see what thickness they are. And I see that in fact they're slightly less than half an inch and I can get two out of each square. So now I'm going to mark this. Show how you do that because everybody else is going to use right. a ruler. I no, I'm going to I'm going to get my pencil, work my finger on there, and I'm going to get my pencil mark and hold your in the middle finger in the same place. In the finger in the same place. I should run in the nail against it, and then that's one. And then the same thing on here. Yeah, that's good to go. And I'm going to go to the bandsaw now. And cut these through. And I keep my fingers out of the way. So 
so you would want to do this before you cut the circles. Yes, because you, if you try and run the circles or a band for, you're asking for trouble. Because it will spin, it will spin, and it'll have your fingers on. So I've got the circles on the back. So now I better put my glasses on. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to follow that line. I was trying to put at least on the line, maybe, maybe a little bit on the outside if I can, certainly on the smaller circle. You see this quarter inch blade's having a little bit of trouble turning the corner. I have heard it said that you can take the back of the blade off, but I've never had any, any success with that. What size blade are you using, or what matters about the blade? This is quarter inch wide blade, you can get 8 inch but they don't last very long and it has 18 teeth to the inch. 18? I think 18, yeah. And Not it's a, and it's a, no. Okay. And it's a rake cut. Meaning? Meaning, it's that slant. it means that when you cut the, blade, the thing at the front, it cuts it wider at the front than, you know, than the back of the blade is. Okay, so, now we're going to cut this one. And I'm going to remember, I'm going to try and keep on the outside of the line. And this I will have to do in sections because this blade won't cut this small. And you could always just take the corners off anyway, couldn't you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, you could just take the corners off. Just like this. And put it on the line. Yes. Actually, you could put it on the lead square, but it would take some turning. No. <laughs> just like my old beginner efforts. If you're going to end up with small pieces like this, I recommend that you put a thin piece of wood through wider than this through the bandsaw so that you've got a platform to cut on so that the bits don't go down there and jam the bandsaw. We can show that on some other video yeah. what to do. Basically, what he's saying, folks, is that you take a piece of yes. wood kind of like this but yeah. very, very thin. That would do nicely. Yeah, let's not do it. Okay. Let's not do it because that's okay. a blank. But and then you would cut a line into it with the bandsaw to about halfway and slide it on there so that it was uh, centered around the blade and you use that that piece of wood as a table to turn on. So you can see a thin piece of wood thinner than this would actually work better. Not to speak of the fact that that's a future bobbin. Okay. okay. Yes. So right now. Okay, wait a minute. Let me get around here. So I've got my ends oversized and I'm going to mark the center so that I can bore them out on this uh, machine with a five eighths forced in a bit okay, because we'll this, show that. Not, not yet. this is five eighths and I'm going to come back to that in a minute because I'm going to cut it. So what I do, there are lots of ways of finding the centre of a piece of wood and what I do is that. I put my finger on and I look at the centre. What, what finger? This finger. No, no, well, no, you're out of the camera. What finger? Right, the middle finger. I put the middle finger on the edge and I hold the pencil and then I move this round and it gives me a good idea where the centre is. There are a mm -hmm. number of different centre founders. I've never found one that I like. That What's this? No, we didn't this tell is, them about this. Okay, this is a centre punch. It's a sprung centre punch. It's a nice piece of kit. What it does, it puts a nice big hole in because you, you get the energy that you've used compressing the spring and it clicks and it gives you a nice big hole and you're going to start on that. Apparently they're good for breaking into cars. Anyway. Oh. So. Fortunately you can't drive. No. Well you all drive on the wrong side anyway. <laughs> okay so there we are. Nice big centre hole. Okay. And what we're going to do now we've got show this. Show them the Forstner bit please. This is the Forstner bit here. Shall I take it out? Do you have another? Uh, show? Not up here. Okay we'll take it out. They need well, to see it. Let me see where the... I don't know where the key is. Okay, so fastener bits are similar to drill bits in that they drill wood or metal, but they drill a very, very nice, a very, very nice, with that point. sharp 
good hole. It's a really nice cut. And that's what we use. And they're obviously better for use for making big holes. Okay. Now why do you have that piece of wood on the bottom? This this is because I'm gonna go through and I don't want to go through onto the metal. So I picked up a scrap bit of wood. It would normally be a bit, bit bigger than this. So what I do A bit wider? A bit bigger. Wider? Yeah, just bigger generally. Right. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and hold this so that I know I'm centered. I'm gonna switch the machine. And I'm gonna go through. And you're drilling into that bottom piece and of wood. And you can feel when you've come through. Okay. Okay? And then I do the same with the other one. So up and on, and down yeah. and through. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're done. I just found it easier. Incidentally, all these machines have a kill switch. So that if you're doing something on the machine that you don't want it to switch on, you can pull this out and you cannot switch the machine on. Mm -hmm. It's a very handy safety mechanism, particularly if there's children around or something yeah, like that. Absolutely. So now I need this centerpiece. And I'm going to go back to the bandsaw. I'm going to take a <laughs> pair of calipers. Big calipers, here we are. They're where the calipers hang. <laughs> exactly. And I'm going to measure this with the calipers. So go on there. I go on there and I tighten it down until I've got the exact measurement of the length and then I come off about a sixteenth because I know that I'm going to have to trim it up afterwards to get the exact right length. Okay. So I've got about a sixteenth bigger and I'm going to mark that on there. That's the length. Right. Okay. Measure twice, cut once. Yes, that's right. It's actually a little tiny bit short, so I'll mark it again. Just a little bit, that's the right length. Okay, now, normally if I were making a lot of them, you only need to mark one. Because when you put it on there and cut it, you've got the length you want, and then you can go through and cut as many as you want at that length. Mm -hmm. So now this is my centerpiece and I have to say I've never seen a bobbin that wasn't made in three parts. Um, if you wanted to make it from the solid you could but it would take forever. So now I've got to make a hole in it for the axle for the axle of the flyer. Now I know the axle of the flyer is a quarter inch. It's a standard size. But I don't want the hole to be exactly a quarter of an inch because the bobbin won't spin freely, so I'm going to go up one more and that is fifteen thousandths of an inch bigger than the last one and it will just go in. So, it's very handy. Now, I'm going to put the three-jaw chuck on. There are a number of different three-jaw chucks and different ways of mounting them and we can go through that at a later date. Which one specifically are you using? I am now? using the Porter chuck, it's an Italian firm. Is it P-O-R-T-A? TA, okay, yes. And it is 5 mil to 20 mil, which is slightly less than a quarter of an inch to about three quarters of an inch. 5 to 20 yeah. quarter. Yeah. They're an, an Italian firm, and I don't know that they have a representative in America. But what the basic thing, what does it have to be? No matter what, who's well to grip on five H, you've got to have at least a, I should say at least a three quarter inch chuck, which this is. The other chucks, the normal size chucks that you get, only go up to about a half inch, and that's not big enough. This is another adapter. It's obviously that's got a different size thread on it. So, so well, is America, it, uh, we had said a five eight inch. It actually Last goes up night. To, to three quarters, and the one I have in the in the workshop down there goes up to seven eighths. Okay. However, lathes in America, small lathes in America, generally speaking, have an inch eight, inch across, eight threads per inch, and these chucks are very inconveniently for America made with a three quarter sixteen, three quarter inch wide, sixteen threads per inch. It suited me very nicely in England, where the lathes are generally three quarter sixteen. However. Adapters are made, and you need to source one inch eight to three quarters sixteen. 
not the other way around. So be careful on that. It's not so plumbing. Now, yes. It's just sizing it, yeah. So yeah it's just and that's thing. only if you need it. If you yeah. find a so, truck the right size, then you don't need the adapter. I'm going to put that on and I'm going to tighten it before I forget to tighten I'm it. I'm going to do this over your shoulder yep. so that they can see. I'm going to put that on and I'm going to make sure it's tight because the last thing you want is something coming on, uh, coming off the lathe so, at 3000 RPM. So you put the tail of the key yeah. in there and, and then tighten it with the grips. Vise grips known mold after 1955 and like mole grips. Now I'm going to put the truck on. <laughs> And I'm going to put the key in, and I'm going to hold that. It's got flat. I'm going to make sure that that is nice and tight. So now this is all tight, and it's not going to come adrift. Working away from the the head isn't ideal, but we we can't get around that. So now I'm going to drill this out with the drill bit that I picked up earlier. So. I'm going to put that in the chuck and tighten it a little bit. That is the dowel. That's the dowel. I'm going to tighten it a bit. And then I'm going to take this out and I'll show you how, we get, how you get these things out. You just wind backwards. You just wind backwards and it comes out and then you jam that in there. That being another? Another chuck. This is a regular 12 mil chuck. Oh, I finished. So, here we are, okay. ready to go. Now, I'm going to switch the machine on. Yeah, keep just, hands out of the way if you want to think. I'm going to switch it. the machine on, and I'm just going to put it on there. And that is conveniently running very nicely true. You want it running true. If it doesn't run true, just give it a push until you can get it through. And to tighten up a little bit, turn the machine on. Make sure the drill is right back. This has a two and a half inch throw. It will go in two and a half inches. Push the point in, get it nicely bedded, tighten this up. Wait a minute, show where you tighten. Tighten up there, locks this, and then wind in. And that's the two and a half inches. Wind out, pull this out your way. What did he do was he pulled the tail out of the way? Yeah, pulled the tail out. Of the way. I was coming around you. Take the dowel out, turn it around because you've only drilled through so far. Push that back in there, tighten it, have a little feel, that's running nicely. How, how could you tell? What do you, what do you well, mean? Well, I put have my a finger feel? just on there, have a little feel of it, and I felt that it was more or less true. It's within two or three thousandths of an inch and I'm just spinning this this is very handy this hand wheel at the back for doing things that you want to do with it mm. for stopping the lathe very quickly for example if you're a bad person so I wound this back and I'm going to bring this up you see there's a little bit of play on there so I'll lock this start the machine and get it on the centre Start winding it through. And you can feel when it goes through. And I'm just going to check it went right through the middle by pushing it in and making sure there's no swath in the middle of the uh, dowel. So now we have, well there's a bit of, there's actually a little bit of swarf. That's never happened to me before so <laughs> it just goes to show. So I'm putting it back in the lathe and I'm just going to Okay, so now we have a nice true hole to 
of the dowel which is going to become the centre of our bobbin. And so now what we need to do, we need to note that this centre goes all the way through and this isn't on the end like this one is. It's actually the dowel comes through a little bit. So we should bear that in mind. Now, this is a little bit bigger. I want it to be tight but I don't want it to be quite that tight. So what I should do, it's a little inconvenient but the dowel's a little oversized. So what I've got to do, I'm afraid, is waste a little bit of time. Take this off. It's okay, they can see you. Mm -hmm. You learn from everything. But I know the dowel's going to be a bit big, but it doesn't matter. So pop that on. This is the sanding plate that we discussed yep. last night. That's true. And it's a face plate with a block of wood that you turn and then the sandpaper. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to trim these ends a little bit on the sanding plate. And I'm holding this so that it runs round. Yeah, you know, the, the, the sanding plate itself is turning it. Yeah. You're not trying to turn it. No. Okay. Okay. Good to go. So just so, let it run loosely in your fingers, folks, yeah. and keep it up so against now, the plate. What I'm going to do with the soft hammer, I'm going to hammer these these ends on. Let me just pick. Okay. So I'm going to find. Let me just put that out of the way. I'm going to find the corner of the bench, and I'm going to knock that down. And I know it needs to go a bit further. So over the lid, I mean, I need a gap. I could use a, Anything. I could use a vise. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to knock it through a little bit. So I should find a cross grain. Okay. A bit more maybe. Oh, so. Okay. So fortunately, I have another piece of wood. So I will throw a circle on this piece of wood. Where's my green thing on? Here it is. So I know that that end isn't quite um, isn't quite small enough now. <laughs> and I will make it a little bit smaller. So there we are. Now I'm going to cut on the outside. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, as long as it's not too small. Keep your fingers out the way of the blade. Obviously your, your machine will have the proper guards in place. So, here we are. Let's do the centre thing again. Just go through this because it broke. Punch it again in the centre. Bring it up to here. Do grip it quite hard because if it takes it out of your hand, it will really hurt you. Now. So, I'm going to take a little bit more. If it's a little, if it's a little loose, and I want to put the outside of the wood on the inside of the bobbin because it would chip. For I know from experience, if I put it on the outside, it'll chip. What, do, what do you mean that. by that? I mean that for some reason, when I come in to smooth it off on the centre, it'll leave little chip marks, mm -hmm. and I don't want that. But the other side where it's cut doesn't seem it doesn't seem to do that. So. So cut on the outside, original face. On, on, on the yeah, on the face yeah. that you've cut. So. Okay, I think that's about right. So he. So I'm looking. Through. I'm looking at the length of that, and mm -hmm. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking by the time I've taken turn it down, yeah. thirty seconds off that, that'll be right. Now. 
so I can now put this end on, which has got a bit more wood and I shouldn't have any trouble with. Okay. Now I'm just going to look at this and make sure that the ends are reasonably square. Yep, they are. So, let's take this off. What he means by that is make sure that you haven't pounded it on. There needs to be a 90 degree angle between the line of this dowel and the face of this wood. So you've got that corner rather than it being, you know, crooked somehow like that, even though it's exaggerated. So well, now I put the hook on and we can get back to where we were. Make sure that that's tight. That's nice, that feels tight. I'm going to put the drill back in the chuck. When he says drill, he means bit. Drill bit, folks. Yeah. So I'm going to put the drill down. I'm going to make this drill bit, which has drilled the hole, is going to become my uh, my jig to hold it on the lathe. And you will notice that on this... Oh, like a mandrel. Not like a mandrel. You'll notice that on this drill, on the three jaws, I've cut teeth into them. With what? With a um, Dremel. With a Dremel tool with a, with a cutting blade on. Because I want it to grip. And so I'm now putting that... You notice I'm not leaving it sticking out too far, so that I, I don't want it to interfere with the... with the, you know, what's going on. So, let's just tighten that up. Yeah, everything and has to be tight, it, folks. That has should, to be yeah, tight. That, should, yeah. I always tighten it on, on three, but two will do. Just to make sure that you've got it in the centre. What he means is if they're different holes, tighten at least two of them. Yeah, and now we're going to put this on. I like to put the big end up against the uh, up against the chuck head, but that's just my choice. And you see how tight that hole has been drilled. If I'd used a quarter inch, that wouldn't fit on the uh, on the spindle on the on the machine. It needs to be just a little bit bigger. So now I can take this off, put my centre back on. Show slowly how you do that. So you're you're just putting something in there. Yeah, something in there, and I'm just winding it back and it forces out. You can, you know, you can put a you can put a push stick in and pound on it if you wish because that hole goes all the way through. So you can pound on it if you wish to get it out but I mean obviously just use the mechanical advantage of the screw thread. And then jam that centre in there, bring the centre up, lock it, make sure it's wound, you know, well back and I'm going to tighten that a little bit that is, that see there's a, they're a little bit off, but that co I, I allowed something so I'm, I know I can turn that down a bit and it'll be alright. So now, I use a plunge cut tool um, almost exclusively, Show the and there. also the uh, also the three corner tool which should be there. So this is the plunge cut tool and it's what I use, you might find a different method. So now I'm going to turn in. I can feel when I get through the eccentricity. I spin it with my finger, that feels good. I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to do this one. have a look at it and see if I think I need a bit more off there. Mm -hmm. So now I'm not going to worry too much about that mark because I can see on this bobbin that that is slightly oval and I'll come to that in a bit. That's about right. I see I've got a little bit of a flat there. So I'm going to take a little bit more off and then I'm going to shape this end. Put the 
put the tool rest as close as you reasonably can, lock it. I'll look and see if the shirt's anything like. And I'm looking down here, and that's not bad. Just check that again. Not that out. There might be a, a few thousand. And so I'm feeling to see if I've got a reasonable finish on the wall. If you weren't as confident, if you weren't as confident, confident about being able to make that shape here on the end, can you show them how you would hold that to? You know how you hold the piece and look? Yeah, I'm looking across here to see if the curve's about the same. So if you can get where I was looking, you can probably see that the curve's about right. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that you can see it's looking starting to shape up. Right. One thing I do know that I've got, I've got a little bit of chipping here. The abrasive will take care of that. Now I'm going to come down here. take off that sixteenth extra and that's going to come off on the sanding plate. And I go in and I'm looking at this dimension. These are the two critical dimensions in my opinion. This one where the band where the drive band goes and this one. So when I judge I'm getting close, I offer the calipers up and I can see I've got a bit more to go. A little bit more. See I'm using that corner of the of the plunge cutter, you don't have to just plunge in. You can use it as a cutting edge. Like that. That goes over just. Now I can come in, take it back to about halfway. I just tighten up a little bit. I can feel it slipping. So I judge that I've this face is on the centre of that grill. And now I'm going to come in, take this excess off, putting away the parts that I don't need, just like Michelangelo. I'm looking down that again, that's looking nice. Now, three corner tool, and you will now see the advantage of having different different thicknesses because that's just about nice to go in there. Just nicely fit. Yeah. 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 And I'm putting on that edge and I'm putting on that edge. And when I judge I've got about down to the right size, I get the other caliper and I try that and it goes over, just nicely. Might be a trifle small, that's fine. So now, I notice that that's got a curve on it, it's a tapered at each end. So this is where the big bad skew comes in. Sometimes these pieces have shapes on them and marks in them and so on. This one just has a slight chamfer. Now, time for Mr. Abrasive, the wood turner's friend. This is, I think, a 150. And I'm 
moving the abrasive about so it doesn't get hot. Just testing to see if I've got a nice finish. This is that cloth back German sandpaper that we got from um, Kingsport. Kingsport, yeah. So I'm sanding every area. Every surface. Now, some people may think that's a satin. Now that has still got the chipping there, so I'm going to have to get that out. But mostly, some people might think that's a, a good finish. It probably needs a bit more, and I'm going to put uh, 220 on it, 330. We're going to do it. And get rid of that. I bent the wood a little bit there. Let's get rid of that. Looking better. So let's go to 220. It's the 220, it says it on it. <laughs> 220 somethings to the something. The higher the number, the finer the grit. This is where I want to start being a bit careful about burning it. About not burning it. About not burning it, yeah. Right. And on to... 320 Let's have a quick look at it, see how it's shaping up. Yeah, it's looking it's looking alright. And now onto the steel wool. Steel wool it's very, very grabby. This is probably double zero. It's very grabby. Um, I recommend if it takes it out of your hand, let go. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting a bit of a shine on it. Okay. Yeah, that's looking reasonably respectable. Let's try the chamois leather with the uh, car polish on it. Very fine abrasive. Okay. And that's about right. So let's release it. Take it off the drill bit. Now I've got one last operation to do. Because I made it a little long, I've got this on the end, which I couldn't get to, and I've got to take that off on the sanding plate. What he means is that he couldn't get to it with the tool while it was on the lathe. That's right. Because it was right up against right the up against teeth this. of That's this right. big chuck. That's right, so let's put that back. Always put your drills back. <laughs> you never do it. <laughs> I, have, I have magnets all over the lathe with drills on it. <laughs> And what am I doing? I am going to put the face plates on. It's got an <laughs> inch eighth on, so this needs to come off. These two parts need to come off together. Face plate. Now, when your face plate gets clogged up, you can buy some. Uh, rubber stuff that cleans it, but sure. this one's alright. Well, sure. Have I got it's it? Right oh yes. <laughs> Crepe leather. Came to my intention in the 1950s when the teddy boys used to wear it on the shoes. Shoes called brothel creepers. Anyway, that's crepe leather. Show them how to clean with it oh, and stop okay. like, making vague cultural allusions. You had two choices as a, t a teddy yeah. boy. You could wear wrinkle pickers or brothel creepers. So that's nicely cleaned up. So now I'm going to using the tool rest just to rest my hand on to give me a little bit of thing I'm basically going to sand that off and, uh, 
there we have a good facsimile of the original. Okay, now will you do something? Will you turn one at speed? Right, let me just, I want to take, this is the one oh, I made earlier, I just want to take the end off this, which I didn't do, it okay. will take a second. one I prepared earlier just like all the good cooks do. And and you would have had all six of these if oh, they yes. did six and you would have had all six of them six. ready. Yeah. Yeah as many as you want. Ten, twelve. Maybe. Okay so, so tell them why speed matters aside from well, money. It, I mean it, it gets your skills up but really it's about earning money. The, generally speaking the old turners were on a pretty thin thing and if you could knock out twice as many as the guy next year you got the wet because you could do it cheaper. Bill Jones goes on about that to some length, and uh, and I guess in his day it was true. So I'm going to get that drill that drilled this hole out back out again. I think that that you get up to a certain speed to where it's comfortable. It's like a dance. You would never do a waltz at a tenth of the speed or something because you yeah. don't get into that swing. So I'm going to use this as a mandrel again. Is in the three jar. Tighten it up. Put the bobbin on. Put the centre up. How long did it take Lock you it. to cut? They kind of know. It took about five um, minutes to cut for it and then another five to drill for it? Yeah, I think, yeah. So ten yeah, minutes so already. Ten minutes in it already. Okay. So you don't have to talk anymore. Okay. They've heard you. Just oh. turn. Okay.
the double step. Normally, obviously, I would do all six or all twelve or whatever before I put it on the sanding plate, so I wouldn't change it round all the time. Well, that's how they did the seventeen operations for the chess piece. Yes, quite. In eighteen ninety-five. Yes, in the Strand <laughs> magazine. No one. Uh, it's the illustrated one. I think know. maybe not. Eighteen ninety-eight. Eighteen ninety-five. <laughs> this will all be this any will all stakes be you want, later. Alan Dewey. <laughs> any stakes. So now, final operation. <laughs> As I said, this would be done normally. And that's not a bad. That's not bad. So there we are, three bobbins. So that's and replication, the, folks, yeah. as Bill Jones says. See, I've still got a little bit of chatter mark on there. I could put that back on there and take it out. The bobbins the old boys made were perfect. And replication is the heart yes. of wood turning. Bill, Bill Jones said any fool can make one. That's right. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Smile. <laughs>